Okay, continuing on here. Um, I was talking about the electrons here that got passed along from photosystem 2 through all these different uh, transmembrane proteins over to photosystem 1 through ferrodoxin and into NADP plus reductase. And that's going to combine NADP plus and hydrogen, which was taken from the water over here originally, and it's going to create NADPH. NADPH and ATP are going to go on to the Calvin cycle. Well, where does ATP come from? The hydrogens that were stripped off, to, off of the water, as well as the hydrogens that came through when this channel protein opened up when the electrons passed through, are going to pump a bunch of hydrogen inside the thylakoid here. Remember, we're looking at a thylakoid. So there's going to be a high concentration of hydrogen and a low concentration of hydrogen on the outside. So what overall ends up happening is that that has to go through a channel from high to low, and we're back to our old friend ATP synthase. And that little one spins yet again, and as it spins, it combines ADP and P, and it creates ATP. So, uh, a little bit more detailed view of the light reactions. All right, here's some checkpoint questions for you. I'll pause for a second. Okay, so coming back here, remember here the whole process of photosynthesis, we've hopefully gone through all the light reactions. Water gets split up by hydrolase, releases hydrogen, which is attached to NADPH and also used to create ATP. We've made oxygen out of the light reactions, and overall, uh, we're going to pass that energy along to the Kelvin cycle. So let's take a closer look at the Kelvin cycle. Uh, I've summarized a lot of what the book says here. Um, they try to make a point out of balancing out the number of carbons that go through this. So, like I put on here, um, that there's three CO2 molecules get attached to three five carbon sugars. So this would be like 15 carbons involved here, along with three more carbons. So you would become three six carbon sugars, which would be 18 carbons total. The book makes a main point out of that. I'm not really too concerned about it, but you may see some uh, written test questions on that, not the FRQs. Um, but overall, the idea is that you keep rearranging these three carbon, six carbon, five carbon. You keep rearranging all these different molecules, and what you end up making is sugar out of the whole deal. Um, how do you rearrange those things? Well, let's take a closer look at that. <clears throat> so this is going to look a lot like the Krebs cycle. Um, it's Pretty confusing unless you just focus in on the main parts here. This is carbon dioxide up here. So carbon dioxide is going to come into the Calvin cycle. Uh, it's the key ingredient that comes in to begin with. And what it's going to join in with is a five carbon sugar that's already been created that has two phosphates already attached to it. It's going to come in, it's going to form this stuff called Rubisco. Uh, that's a six carbon sugar with two phosphates involved. And if you recall, anytime you have phosphates involved, molecules are pretty unstable and it's going to break apart and it's going to form a three carbon sugar and then through a lot of series of steps but i'll just walk you through the important parts here atp drops off phosphate and becomes adp over here can't see it um, but it added a phosphate to this again whenever you add phosphate you destabilize the molecule it changes around and changes around nadph drops off a of hydrogen so hydrogen is now involved here and it also pulls off another phosphate and so it becomes NADP plus. The NADP plus and the ADP are going to go back to the light reactions and get recycled once again. Uh, the molecule through a number of different enzymes is going to get rearranged and rearranged and one of those molecules is going to get kicked out and it's called G3P. The three means three carbons. This is like a glucose three phosphate. So this would be like three carbons with a phosphate attached to it. It is specifically a sugar, but it's not the type of sugar that we want. We don't want, uh, or what we do want would be glucose itself. And what we need to do is just wait for one more of these to show up when this thing turns another time. So when you join two of these three carbon sugars together, you get a six carbon sugar, and that would be your C6H12O6. That would be your glucose. So essentially, we kick out one three carbon sugar. The process continues on with the rest of the molecules and they continue on and ATP comes along, destabilizes it again, and then it's ready to pick up another carbon dioxide. 
Now recall back from the beginning here, we had something about the three carbon dioxide molecules attaching to three five carbon sugars becoming three six carbon sugars. So there's a bunch more of these molecules actually going through the system. This diagram here just only shows one of those things going through it. So we lose one three carbon sugar, but there's two more left here is really, or five more left actually. So uh, here's another checkpoint question for you or a set of those. Um, take a look at those. Give me a second. Okay, so overall, kind of summarizing statements here. The light dependent reactions uh, harness wavelengths of light, specifically red light, uh, 680 and 700, uh, to excite electrons in two photosystems, photosystem two and photosystem one, providing the kinetic energy required to transfer two potential energy stored in ATP and NADPH. Remember um, that ATP synthase is involved there, NADP plus reductase is involved there. Anytime you have those ACEs, those are enzymes, and they make this stuff. So the light reactions create these two forms of energy. The Calvin cycle uses those pieces of energy, and what it does is it uses these to destabilize the molecule that it has that it uses in it, uh, called that rubisco. And so it takes in carbon dioxide, it rearranges the molecules using this energy and destabilizing them, and it pulls out a G3P. And it does that as soon as it does two of those, those two G3Ps combine together to form glucose. So getting back to our original questions, can you tell me where and uh, when and where the light reactions happen? How about the Kelvin cycle? Hopefully you can go through all these questions and get to them. The one that I'm concerned about for you guys that I think you might get confused on, four key proteins here. Remember, specialized proteins are enzymes. So there should be a number of different enzymes that you can specifically name off uh, or pigments that you can name off and you can say, okay, well, that one's used there, that one's used there, that one's used there. And then where do the products derive from? Like where does, where does oxygen come from? Where does it originally come from? And I think that you'll run into a similar scenario where if you start thinking about it and comparing it to uh, respiration, you'll find out that some of these products and reactants come from unknown places uh, that you hadn't thought of before. So once you're done here, um, then you should be able to review chapter 10, sections 1 through 3. Um, I've kind of summarized them here, and then what you need to do is carefully read 10.4. Um, there's alternate ways that certain plants create glucose outlined, um, specifically C4 plants and CAM plants. Those will be additions to um, what you need to know. So hopefully I've summarized that all right for you. I know it goes quick, um, but please uh, go back, pause it, watch it again, do what you can, and we'll have some work days in class as well.